So I think we are about to get started. So um, welcome, um, and this time with uh, audio also. <laughs> so um, I, my session is called Azure Context Marketing, and um, I will try and uh, demonstrate our Azure platform that is built uh, on top of Joomla. And it works with contextual marketing. And earlier today, I did a session on all the glorious, wonderful things you can do with contextual marketing. Um, and this is sort of the the second half of it. Like one, the earlier one was talking about it, and this one is about showing how you can do it. So um, I'll just step into it. That's uh, me, who I am, and what I do, and organizations, etc. I'm involved in. Um, so uh, I have things coming out of my ears, um, as you can see. Uh, some call it thoughts, I don't know. So uh, context marketing platform. And let me just mention, this will be a live demonstration of the back end of ASEA context marketing. Um, so let's see. Uh, we might be done in five minutes if there's bad Wi-Fi. Uh, but sometimes you just live on the edge, right? Um, so let's see how it goes. So um, ASEA Context Marketing is about disruptive uh, content marketing. And the reason why it's disrupt disruptive is probably one of the most used words in the last 12 months. Disruption, disruptive, et cetera, et cetera. But at the heart of it, disruption um, for us and for ASEA is about three things. We're doing things differently than others are. We're doing things smarter than others are. And then compared to the uh, middle to high-end range and enterprise-level customers, we're doing things drastically cheaper. So right now, some of the projects we win and we do with ASEA, um, the companies will get proposals for, say, a million or one and a half million dollars, and then we come in at uh, one-third of that, and we basically win all the projects. Because which company would spend a million more if they could avoid to do it? So And, and this goes on a lot of different scales. Um, so we're trying to be very specific about the three ways of disruption we work with. And that's why we say that SEO is a disruptive uh, content marketing tool. Um, so we also have some things in it. Uh, one thing we call always upgraded. Um, and at the heart of that, and that's also very disruptive, because every organization on this planet that has an ERP system or CMS system has been in the situation where they were on an old version and they couldn't just upgrade, they had to migrate. And the cost of migration is really high. And as a web agency, when Joomla came from Joomla 1.5 to 2.5, you'd actually lose maybe 20 or 30% of your customers because they did not want to migrate. So the cost of migration is relatively high. So we want to take all of those things out of the game because it's always upgraded. Another thing is that working with a contextual marketing platform and working with behavioral data, we move, uh, when, when we go out and deploy projects with clients, we're story driven. The clients give us their stories, their experiences, and uh, the stories about their client, their customers. But once we deploy this, we're no longer story driven. We're moving into something that is data driven. And as a data driven process and cooperation with the client, then it's a different form of cooperation. We, we no longer sit down every three years to do a new project. We actually sit down every three months to look at the data and figure out how can we optimize things, how can we do it better together. So the client loyalty level goes up and the chances of losing a client is a lot less because we're in this together, we're growing together. So, and that's the other part of it, beside the, the always upgraded, upgraded, is that we're growing together. As the client grows, the system grows, the data grows, and then we grow again, we build an even better system, and it, everyone is always upgraded, so we keep growing together. So, <coughs> I just wanted to touch bases on why we call it disruptive. It's not to use a buzzword, it's because we actually believe that we are disrupting the market financially, technologically, and in ways of how you work with things on a, on a human basic uh, foundation. It's easier to work with compared to 12 or 15 external systems. So um, <coughs> a quick point on SEO context marketing. It's optimized for, um, for end users. So let's say that we have a user uh, and a client that wants to create some sort of uh, content then you can actually use the front-end wizard creation um, where it will look at the way you have created the content hierarchies, the content types, the fields, and all of that in the layout. 
And then it will automatically read all of those abstraction levels and create a simple front-end creation wizard for the users at the company that's working with the content. So it's very optimized towards working processes for end users. Uh, it empowers agencies, um, and especially advertising agencies. They do not have uh, back-end developers hired pretty much anywhere in the world any longer. So a lot of advertising agencies is in the $29 WordPress market. So they'll buy a template at $21, uh, $29, uh, change eight pictures, and then put it online. Some advertising agencies then charge $100,000 for that, <laughs> and others charge $1,000. So it's, it's very hard to see what value they actually create. Advertising agencies in the 80s and 90s were companies you, you started a partnership with, and then they would help you to storytell your products in a way so you could get more money for your products, you could sell more products, and they actually added a lot of values. Uh, advertising agencies in the last five or ten years are struggling a lot in finding their role for the future. Uh, they, 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 they merge, they go under, they reopen and whatever. So uh, what we want to do is we want to make a platform where we are able to educate the agencies into delivering more value, more output for their customers. And, and helping, especially advertising agencies, uh, et cetera, get back to the core of their business of, of creating and helping users in creating content. So we have some never seen before features, um, which I will show you in a bit. We also have a lot of statistics, but we don't have statistics that are not relevant for the users in the organization. So let's take an example. How many in here uses Google Analytics? So everyone, right, 100%. So how many in here uh, logs into Google Analytics more than once a month to see the curve is up or down? So that was two, uh, three, four people. Okay. So, and, and, and you're probably the most professional audience you could have, right? So the end users, if you do the same survey with end users, 99% of the end users does not log in more than once a month, and they look if the curve is going up or down, then they log out and don't use it. So Google Analytics is nice. But as a practical tool in your everyday working day, it's not something that's usable for humans working in organizations. It's, it's just another system that, com uh, that makes things complex and not, not something you can work with in your everyday work day. So <coughs> we have the information that's needed inside a SEA. We have the curve that goes up and down with the visitors. We have the conversion data and stuff like that. We measure engagements and all of that, but not to a level where we kill the process of the humans working with it. So, um, <coughs> as here context marketing is extremely, extremely abstract. So that means that we are we are operating with entities where we can reuse any element or part of an entity with many-to-many -many relations, and we can do a lot of fantastic things that you cannot do in normal uh, systems today, CMS systems today. So, um, <coughs> one of the really, really cool things is that. Let's say uh, I got a, a Joomla site, and then I got uh, a Cuba mailing installed, so I want to do newsletters. But instead of just having a newsletter, I'll actually set up five different newsletters, and then I can just import the ASEA, uh, newsletter module into ASEA, and instantly I can start to work with it. And I can use uh, different techniques of and information, behavioral data, and all of that to actually change which newsletter option we offer out to the users so it becomes more relevant to be in different lists. But I'll show them on that with lead generation and optimization tools. <coughs> um, and then we go to a live demo. So that was pretty much almost the last slide I have, and now we're going to risk it all. So uh, let's see. Um, this is our asiacontextmarketing.com website. You can also see more in here. Um, request a demo and et cetera. So um, the first one uh, I'm logging into here is, uh, is a website, actually this website, and this is ASEA. Um, I'm going to, this is a relatively new website, so not so many interesting dates yet. We have another project building here, a, a European project for the European Commission. Uh, I think in Europe, in the last 10 years, um, People spend 10 billion euros on ITS projects or something like that, but no one has the overview of what's going on. So we're building this for the European Commission with nine consortium partners, amongst others, Xerox and the uh, University of Newcastle and others. 
So we're building a platform where we're putting in all the ITS, deployed ITS projects all over Europe up on the screen. Then we're crowdsourcing it, so they just need to supply seven, eight uh, data fields, and then it will go online, and they can enrich it. So we have uh, like a, a one-stop uh, truck shop to have all the data and ITS here in once. So this site has a lot of things. It has many-to-many -many relations, and uh, so when you go into something, let's say we would go into what's where, and now we will see how quick the Wi-Fi is. Yeah, okay, we survived. Um, when we go into the what's where here, we can select types, categories, or uh, search projects. And so we take a category, we take travel information or pre-trip information. So all of this is basically just hierarchy from within a SEA that then comes out on the front page. Whenever you create a field in a SEA, then you get TWIG entities. So we're using TWIG uh, at all levels. So you can combine everything. And let's say we wanted to take data from another extension in Joomla. We just write a small plugin that exposes the data areas from that plot from that component into our Twig template system in ASEA, and now we can actually blend. So let's say we had a an e-commerce site, uh, booking software, uh, a forum, whatever. Then we can pull data fields out from all of the uh, different third parties and just work them into the different layouts we're doing. So, um, but I'll just show uh, an example here. Let's open the C new CITS Newcastle here. We do have a lot of filtering on the side and uh, relational. Wh what? Uh, I could try. <laughs> so in this case, we have a, 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 a case here. Uh, um, and it's a guy called Simon Edwards is the author. It has different domains. It has tags, uh, it has technical readiness levels and all that. Basically, this is just fields that is part of the data specification for this content type. So this content type is a deployed ITS project. So, and then it's filled out, and as it does that, I mean, if I click on connected and automated vehicles, it will go across all categories, across all different dimensions, and link this into all other kinds of, of content. So I, I will get an output out that is only on that dimension. And of course, for search engines, to pick something like this up is extremely valuable. It will put all the pages uh, on the top of, of, uh, of Google. So, but I just wanted to show an, a simple example of this before going in to the back end. So we'll just go into the back end. So this is the dashboard of SEO. Just if we click out here, you can see we are, oh. <coughs> we're still in Joomla. So we're just inside Joomla, and then I go to SEO. And then I'm in a SEA country. So um, that's basically it. So we sort of have the numbers and the statistics you need. I mean, when you log in and out of Google, you don't look for anything else than this anyways, right? So let's not bother with anything but this. So we can see uh, visitors, referrals, the sources of where people are coming from. Then down here, if it's like an e-commerce site, or when we set up the conversion things, it will measure conversions. If we have active A-B split tests running, it will actually show the results of that. Then we have some top items here, which, which content items is performing best. And if we set up uh, conversion values, uh, let's say we had a download white paper on a, on a landing page that had a value, then it will summarize all the values and how many conversions it's done and how much value it's created. So in a lot of organizations today, the people who write all the content for the website are not very uh, valued as employees because it's hard to understand the, the importance of the job they do. But when you suddenly add numbers to all of this, I mean, if you go into a website after two years and say, yeah, look at the article I spent two hours writing last year or two years ago, it's, uh, it had a, a, a revenue of 2.1 million. Then it's probably the best two hours this company has ever spent on marketing. So it's also about putting value on all the things that are normally not shown so you can better understand as a company what it is that we're doing that is creating value for our company. What is it that is, that is creating an output that's productive? <coughs> because let's face it, in this world, we can work endlessly <laughs> with things. There's so many systems and opportunities and possibilities today. So figuring out what we're doing that works the best and then continuing along those paths is very important. At the bottom, <coughs> um, we have the latest visitors. 
uh, in this case, especially if, I mean, if, if you have a lot of business to consumer visitors, it's hard to use company enrichment and stuff like that. But if you have a lot of business to business, then you can actually see which businesses are visiting your website. It means small screenshots of their websites. And if we use the business enrichment web service we have, we can show which sectors they're from and countries and their social media links and all of that. It's quite extensive what's possible today. So, but if you just quickly go to the side here, we have an overview, which is a dashboard and alerts. Then we have content, which is categories, items, and call to action modules. So in an everyday context, your normal web editors would actually only work in these three items. They don't really need it more than that. And then when we go into members, this is an add-on where we have organizations and members and modern ACL and all of that. And an interesting little aspect is that all of the member system for organizations and views and all that is also using the same Twig template system. So if you want to take partial data from a member profile and put it into a different place about something completely different, then you have access to all your data sources. And because we're using it with entities, we're actually borderlining. The, if, if, if some of you remember the original uh, UCM con uh, concept we talked about four, five, six years ago, to have a universal content model where you're able to use content from all sorts of extensions and use them how you want to use them because there's a structured way of doing it. The old concept of UCM, I think some of it is actually still on the database level in Joomla, but it was never really used to anything. The way we're doing it here is light years ahead of the original concept. And it's very, very simple to work with here. So, <coughs> so we have a full organization members, member roles, and role system also. Uh, right now, we're adding a workflow engine. So basically, all the content items can have different states, and you can define the states content items uh, and categories can have. So let's say you, you, you go into a company and you want three, st three sta uh, states for a content item, uh, uh, drafted, uh, pre-approved, and finally approved beyond being published and unpublished, then the workflow engine, which is a, a visual editor, where you can drag and drop your own workflows that ties into the ACL system, that ties into the state and all that, is also built into the system. So that means that when we don't go out to the front end, we're talking about a front, easy front end wizard to create content earlier, then you can take all of that and combine it. So when people log in in the front end, if they have a specific job in the organization, uh, that they should only do a certain thing like interps specific content or write specific articles or whatever it is, then they will get that reality and nothing else. So it's very, very targeted toward being very easy to work with and even new hires in the company can be productive from day one without a, a lot of training. <coughs> um, as we go down here, we have the marketing aspects, AB split test, wizard patterns, wizard flows and referrals. And a small example, the referrals, uh, we see a lot of customers who are really uh, surprised by the referrals. I mean, Google Analytics has been counting referrals for years, but since no one uses it, it's like, what? And then suddenly they go, oh, uh, we, ha we have a customer that sells furniture. And they say, wow, our eighth uh, most important referral uh, website the last month was a magazine that did articles about furniture. And they didn't even realize they had a ma uh, an article around <laughs> about their furniture. And now they can see that that then converts into actually selling the furniture too. So now they're actually contacting the author of the article and saying, hey, maybe we should uh, talk some more. Uh, could we send you a furniture to test or whatever? So it's important to have the insights on your website. But because it's today in external systems, a lot of corporation organizations do not, does not have insight into their website or the website users. So some might say, ooh, that's a lot of data running. <laughs> yes, but compared to what you need to do today, you're actually in, in a lot of uh, organizations, you'd have to hire four or five people uh, to use all your external system and to, to check and work with everything. Then our goal is to make it possible for the people who works in that organization to be able to work with the things in one place and then this is the center onwards. So <coughs> um, down here we have the setup parts, and this is sort of where you start. So when you build a website, you start by building the content hierarchies. Of course, you have an idea of how we're going to build this. But then you start by defining some uh, content types, like you would have a, a blog element, a news uh, element, a article element, and you have different types. In, in ASEA, we don't really care if it's uh, cars or fishing boats or trees or 
news or whatever. It's just different types of content. So basically, you would start by defining some sort of types, like we had the deployed ITS project type we saw earlier. So the type is an, is a, an abstract r uh, dimension that then has relations from the types into the actual fields. So we have the fields coming in here. So le if you look at fields like a layout, we have a news layout. In that news layout, we have 28 fields. We have a heading, a trumpet, an image, uh, an intro, uh, a paragraph, one paragraph, two, etc. So basically, a layout just, uh, just consists of different fields, and each of these fields will then get a field uh, code. They will belong to a type, and they're in a group. So because we have these, these uh, different dimensions, when we then uh, go to the front page in the simple wizard, then it will look on each of the group relations and, and do one screen per each of the groups. So if you set up your 28 fields in five different groups, then on the front end, when you create new content, you have five wizard steps. So it's a simple and intuitive process to work with. So <laughs> we just click New. Um, then we can select the types, and so let's say we took the deployed ITS. And then basically, we can go into the field types. We have address, suggestions, category, related, checkbox, color, context, persons, content, type, um, date, date range, editor, file upload, gallery, Google map, image, item, related, member, multi-text, area, number, organization, select, select, area, text, URL, user, video, YouTube. So with that, you can pretty much do anything. But let's say we have, in, like in Denmark, we have something called GIS maps, which is uh, geographical maps used by municipalities and architects and stuff. Let's say I wanted to show the GIS maps on our website. Then I just develop a small plugin, a GIS field plugin. I install that plugin, and instantly now we can create fields that support that functionality. So because at the end of the day, where we beat the competition is where we're able to add more value than they can. And, and at the heart of it, that's what the clients want. So, so it's abstracted to a level where it's very simple to add those unique things for the individual clients that they need. So um, <laughs> we can also set if it's recommended and which groups it belongs to, which will then make everything else happen. So even if you go and create a new field, two years into the process, it will automatically and organically flow into the rest of the system and just work right away. Um, I'll just, and we have versioning, of course, and stuff like that. Um, I'll just cancel here. Just a little, uh, a little thing, you know, we have the, the power, uh, the, the, the filter, like we have in Jumulates here, too. But uh, we also have something else, columns. Because for us, for me, I have all the columns on. But let's say for, for another user, it might not be needed. So why bother people with all of that? So if we go up to the items, just an, as an example here, we have name, type, categories, access, author, engagement, visit, status, ID. Well, I'm a user. I don't want to know access. I don't want to know uh, ID. Um, I might even, yeah, I'd like to have that. I'll just apply it. And then on the fly, it will change the, the user experience for me as a user individually to what I need to work with. So we can dumb it down or we can make it more complex depending on what the user needs. And that's interesting because the site implementer, or the website builder, or the agency, their users would have everything. But the editor in the company might only have three or four uh, columns. So, so there's a really big difference on what's needed. And if we take all of it here, you can just see as an example conversion, conversion values, and IDs, and everything here. Then the impression, this is rather simple, right? And now we go from something that seems rather simple uh, to something that has a lot more data on it. And it's, it's harder to have the overview on this compared to the other experience. So um, we'll just um, finish the construction elements. Then we have field groups, and that's just the groups that, that they just group fields together. So um, there's not a lot of uh, uh, wood in that. It's just an, 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 an dimensional support function to make sure that we can make it autom automatic to create better experiences. Um, <coughs> then we have templates. And the templates we have, we have a category detail template, I item template. We have some views. We have different things here. Um, category list related items. So at, at any point, now let's try and open this one. Um, 
And then we have a template in here, and we have full twig support of all uh, data areas, all entities, and all of that here. So we can just click around what is it we want. And let's say I, I want to integrate our RedShop into this, then we install the RedShop plugin, and instantly any field in RedShop would be available right here. So it would be a place that said RedShop, I could click that, and insert any data element from RedShop right away. So, so being able to do these blended layouts where you reuse data and you can take data from all sorts of sources and put it together is really important because it's one of the challenges today is to actually um, you could do something in e-commerce, you could do something in a form, you could do something somewhere else, but if the things are not related, if the things are not working together, and if you don't give the users the experience that they need and not what your component by pure luck or accident can actually output in a view, then you're not really doing what the users want to do. And that is at the core of it. That's what we need to do. We need to follow the user's demand. <coughs> but you can see this is fairly simple to work with. For anyone who ever worked with a Joomla template, it's bleep and damn simple. We something like filtering. So we have filter custom field and the ID and it's a checkbox. So all the things we've done filtering on the side before, it's very simple to work with. We have a lot of uh, documentation for our partners, for this both the content and solution partners to work with all of this, so it's fairly simple. Um, there's some guys, uh, even amongst us here, who's working with page builder concepts and, and other things like that, and we're not really. Page builders are extremely important for the mass market, for the do-it-yourself users, but in medium to large size organizations and corpora uh, corporations, you want a fixed layout, so no matter where you do a marketing article or throughout the world, it's the same layout every time it follows the standards and structures, and it's as quick as possible to do it. But if, if you do it yourself, a more creative company that does page building and stuff like that, then you need to be empowered to be able to do all of that. So it's two different use cases. So we don't have any plans to implement a page builder because it's, it's not the, the target audience we have for this. They're very good for that audience. Um, <coughs> You could add a page builder, but yeah. So um, <coughs> that's the, the templates. In the, um, this is actually not the newest install we have here. In the newest version, uh, we have some called channels. Uh, actually, hold on, I'll just jump in here. We just went to the SEOContextMarketing.com website, uh, which is the newest version. And if we go into um, to the content here, yeah, I will, I will show you more. Um, no, we actually didn't have the channel set up here. Okay. I will talk about it then. So um, <coughs> we'll get to it in just a bit. We have locations too, which means that whenever you need to have a physical location, the challenge is that you have to have it in your database all the cities or whatever you have. But with locations, we're just using Google Maps. So when you start writing something in the field, it will verify the actual spelling and, and location. Because if people are using locations as a way to find different sorts of content and they're misspelling it, then it's not a lot of value, right? So it simplifies some of those things. It's also used, so wherever you're using it, like here, um, when we have the overview as what's where, we can list the different templates in a grid view, in a, a detail view, in a Google map view. It's just different ways of looking at the same content. Um, so we can see here we have a, a Google map module in the top, and then down here we have a, a, a grid view. We change that to the list view, or any other view you wanted. We could even render it in something different if we wanted to. And the filters we saw inside the template before is just these. So this is just a category detail template with the, with the filtering on the sides. So, um, <coughs> and then we have the module types. I'll just finish that one of the setup type. You see the module types is when you pull in a module to be used for a SEO. And I haven't shown the modules yet, but we'll get to that in a bit. So when you do that, you just click new, and then it will look at the Joomla install and take any Joomla uh, module that's installed and you just, let's say, uh, latest tweets by Joomla works, for instance, save, then it basically imports and adds a meta layer on top of that module. So if we now open it up in the CTA modules, and just say new, and then I can take my latest tweet by Joomla works, which is now an option, um, and then it's pulled it in, and then I also have display options. So now I can control my module. 
IP country region city zip code internet provider domain name hosting refer a visit pattern or device. Oh, actually, I'd only want to show this module to mobile users. Uh, mobile users who are from uh, uh, Canada, um, yeah, who, who has come from Facebook.com. So people from Canada that visit our page from Facebook on a mobile, we'd like to show them a small banner where we tell them that we have a Facebook page that's optimized for mobile, whatever it is. So it's fairly simple, and we could use that with any module at all we installed in Joomla. So really, once you get the basic uh, data specification and content hierarchy set up, the fields and the layouts and stuff, then it's just about producing content and uh, getting in the modules and stuff like that. Um, <coughs> I'll just jump out here again. And then uh, we have notifications and web event types. The web event types is when we want to measure something. If we want to measure people going below the fold or people clicking an image or any sort of engagement, we want to, when we have 99% of the users who it's not converted yet, we want to try and isolate the 10 or 20% of those 99% that are the most uh, potentially easy to convert over into customers. They're the potential that can tenfold, twentyfold what you get out of a website. So to do that, we need to measure their uh, behavior on the website to better understand them. So what we do is, again, we install small plugins. A plugin that looks if you go below the fold, a plugin that looks if you look at uh, variants on a product page, etc. So this is sort of the web of when types that does it, and then we do small plugins to do it. Um, <laughs> But that's a little, it's a little technical, but at the end of the day, that means that when we get into the categories, which is the content types here, we have categories, then we can actually measure engagement levels on categories once we start to measure them. When we get into the items, then we can do the same. So uh, let's say we go into items and then we click filter my items by <laughs> engagement level. Well, all the items you have written with the highest engagement levels that has not any con conversions yet, that's your biggest potential. That's where you're able to actually get the most out of putting in the effort to converting more customers into your business. But if you don't know it, or if you have to log into 17 different systems and doing a data aggregation project in spreadsheets and whatnot, then 99% of all co uh, companies will never do it because it's too hard to do it, and here it's built in. So <laughs> when you make a new item, you just click New. Say, uh, yes, this is a deployed ITS. Proceed. And now, this is perhaps not the best example on the planet, because uh, ITS Observatory deployed ITS, the data specification is like 16 pages per item type. So, But even with something like that, with that complex a data specification, you can see the groups really come into mind here, because first it will show the required fields. So that's what you need to fill out to actually save the item. Then it will show the recommended fields, which is the minimum we would recommend to get the best experience for the user. And then after that, we can go through the different basic info, what, where, when, how, why, results, etc. And it's very simple to do. It's drag and drop images, it's clicking, it's selecting, and all of that. And we have relations on so many different dimensions. So we have relations to other types, we have relations to categories, we have automated relations, we have manually selected relations, we have tag relations. So, and all of that is super, super important because at the end of the day, all those relations will go into the search engines and will assure that you get a lot more users in. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and we have more, uh, of course, we have general information, which you pretty much know is like a Joomla article. Publishing options, which is also like it's normally. Location information wants to do geographical relation. Um, so <coughs> in the last 12 months, Google really changed the way they, sh they show your search results. They default to local searches. So um, if you're in a big country and you want to have local presence all over the country, then you need to write like testimonials from different cities and stuff to try and get a geographical coverage. So you'll actually show up in all of the country and not just around where your office is. So a good way to do that is add a geographical location to all the articles you do and, and write it into your content too, because then Google will actually start to deliver those, uh, uh, those results towards the people that are search searching locally nearest to those, and then you will get even further ahead of any competitor. And no one is doing this yet, but it's really, really, really efficient. It's like 
borderline, borderline gaming the system, but, but that's what Google wants, because Google wants to create something, uh, give something to people that's meaningful for the people, and that's, uh, the closer it is, the more meaningf meaningful it is. So uh, <coughs> we also have SEO, so you can override and change all the SEO elements, of course, directly built into it. You could also decide if you want to append to it, prepend it, or replace it automatically. It'll assign everything normally. And then we have the CTA modules. We don't have any here, but you, you can actually see which call to action modules does this item actually show. And then you could see the data on how they perform and why they perform. And if you have AP split tests running on the CTA modules, you can see them from here too and initiate new ones too. So um, I'll just step out of this one and then move to the CTA modules. Um, Going from a dynamic CMS website, which is still sort of static into a contextual real-time marketing platform, is of course a huge step. In five years, it'll be the norm. That is what the web will be. But right now, it's a huge step. We're moving from a, a teenage industry. I think web development is, is uh, 19 years old. I mean, it's, a, it's a, an, a, a almost adult teenager. But it's also moving in the next few five years into adulthood for real, into a more mature base where it gets more, more detailed, more complex, more self-service. It's tied into factory and production systems, to ERP systems, and it will be the natural place to integrate all of these things because the website is where both the customers and the employees have the shared platform where they can actually meet things on, on, but on, on their level, on the way that they think and they look and how they need to do things. So the website is a natural place to do it. We can see already today that with 10, 12, 15 systems, people are not logging into the external systems. So there's a big potential and opportunity in making the website the natural place for all of this. So the CTA modules, um, once we set them up here, we can try and open a custom. That's just Joomla's HTML module, more or less. Um, <coughs> so once we set that up, we can add in some conversion value, conversion currency, put it in a node or whatever. Um, so let's say we use Redform, one of our old extensions, to do forms a lot. So we'd set up a red form and then we'll just load it into the custom module here and we put a conversion value on $50 or whatever. Then every time it'll count all the conversions, put it back to the items that are actually loading the form by the call to action modules and then it'll co count value on that item. Um, the content is just a visual box here, like the custom HTML module. Uh, and then you have all of these things, of course. Um, but it's really interesting. Now, one of the things we haven't touched so much yet is the wizard flows and wizard patterns. And I'll just, uh, I don't know how much time we got, but I'll, I'll, I'll round off with them. Considering they're clapping next, I think we're getting there. So uh, you go into wizard flows, and here it will show you all the visitors. And here you can, pay, of course, some places you don't get location, others you do, it's based on GeoIP. GRP becomes better and better and better all over. In some countries, there's 92, 93% support. In other countries, it's 60, 65, 70%. But it, it gets better all the time. Again, one more data. We can just go and say, well, I'd like a screenshot. If we, uh, if we took one, browser, uh, we got the rest. It depends. If you have the uh, enrichment web service on it, it would like to take screenshots of the website of the visitors and put them out here too. So um, as you can see here, we don't so much here. Yeah, we have a few down here. Um, so this is, um, this is the University of um, Aalborg in Denmark. So we can see that someone from the University of Aalborg had visited us and they stayed there. Uh, they had 18 page views. They stayed for uh, uh, five, m five hours and uh, wow, uh, 10 minutes and 25 seconds. That's a, that's a pretty nice user. They came in on the desktop on Chrome 54, so let's try and open them up. And then we can see this is what we have now. If we use the company enrichment web service for business to business, we can actually see a lot more data down to the sectors and all of that. But then here we will have all the wizard flows. This is one wizard flow. If the customer has come back multiple times, we can pick between the different wizards. So we have some base data here, and then we can see um, what they've done here. If you hold the mouse over this page, it will actually show the URLs they're visiting. But when we then install the small plugins where we measure behavior, then we translate this. Right now, it's just a generic one. This guest visited this page. But then we'll say, this guest scrolled below the fold. 
This guest looked at the product variant with Oak. This guest clicked the image. This guest requested a white paper, etc. So suddenly we have a full list for the specific user of what the users are doing. Also, if they're not buying anything, but we can measure all the other things that makes it makes us able to to split between the high potential users we are not conversion and all the other users which we have a, a much harder time converting. So we can focus on those with the biggest potential, those with the highest engagement. Th we can really create some difference. I mean, it's not hard to do, and uh, I know it sounds a little nuts, but, but some of the projects we do, they do change like 400, 500, 600, 800 percent effect in 12 to 18 months. And I mean, that's some effing insane numbers. But of course, when you go from a, a digital world 1.0 view into something completely different, where you do the same as you do out in your, your companies when customers visit you, then you get those results out of it. It is, it is a completely different ways of working with it. So let's say you went to the front page, you went into uh, furniture, you went to the shelf system, and then you looked on the variant with oak. That's a really interesting pattern. So anyone, we don't care about the front page, but anyone who went into shelf systems, look at the oak uh, model is of this variant, those three steps, they're quite important. Then we go up here and we click new visit pattern. Oak shelf system pattern. So now we have a pattern. So let's see, an error has occurred. We don't have a pattern. <laughs> so Yeah, it's, uh, it isn't the newest install here, but uh, it's, uh, it, the site is not live, it's still in production, uh, this one here. Um, it will be live in the next month, by New Year's, it's going live in Europe. Um, it, it'll be interesting for the European uh, Union to actually know what the money went on the last 10 years. Um, so yeah, so it'll get a lot of attention. So, um, but what happens is when we have the pattern, then when we go up to our call to action modules and we control them, then we have a new dimension. We go into the custom modules. <coughs> and as we then go to display options, we go down to the visit patterns. And then my oak shelf system pattern is right here. So I just click it here. And now we actually have a, a user pattern. So any other user in the future that visit our website that shows the same pattern will get exposed to the module we want to show them. So if I have a newsletter in my I keep a newsletter about oak furniture, and I see someone with this pattern, I'd like them to join my newsletter on oak furniture, not just my general newsletter, because I want to send mails out about oak furniture to those guys because that's more relevant and I will sell more products. That's basically what it is. But of course, I can still combine that and say, well, it's only if it's desktop or if it's mobile or if they come from Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever or whatever or whatever. So, and I can always, as the, the, the lowest hanging fruits are many, but, but like uh, doing a small module to advertise your LinkedIn page and then setting up a rule so anyone that comes from LinkedIn, they will actually see a module at the top of your page uh, advertising your, link, your LinkedIn uh, page. That will increase the amount of people following you on LinkedIn, more than uh, a thousand percent in, in no time. Because when you hide it at the bottom, then 99% of the users will never see it. But it, when it's suddenly up there where it's relevant, then all those people will convert extremely more than you ever had before. So it's really easy to work with some of these things. All of this is prepared for machine learning because the data parameters we're we are collecting here is just variables. It's not that many data in reality. It's not, it's not brain surgery. It's just executed pretty nicely. <laughs> so yeah, but, but we could basically take the data here, like uh, postal code, city, pattern, the behavioral pattern, and what people end up buying in an e-commerce store. We could send that over to Google Prediction, and Google could send the data back of which products to show to which visitors almost in real time. So then we start predicting what people will buy based on their behavior. And we don't use cookies. We don't use anything except um, the data we collect on the site and the geo IP information. So um, the normally in our newest version, if you click into items uh, here, and then we go into an item, then we have a new tab up here that says channels. 
So what it does with channels, when you click on channels, then you click Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, Twitter. And then as we saw the layout before, and the fields go into the layout with Twig for the web application, we have another layout for Twitter, one for Facebook, one for Instagram, etc. And then it might not use all 78 fields for Twitter. It'll only use three of the fields or combine them into a new one. But then what you do is you just click off the social media you want it out to, and when you click save, then it posts it to your social media. If you plan it to release in three days, then it'll release everything in three days, also the social media. So, and, and why do we do that? Because everyone else is putting social media and marketing automation outside the system. We're putting it in again, but why? Because we really want the content marketing to happen on the web platform. So when it does all of this, it links all of it back to the website and we pull traffic back to the website because then we get the full data. We get our own data where we have full insights and then we can use that to be more data driven, to be more smart about what we do and, and utilize more of the potential. So I cannot say a lot more. I'm told in my uh, little earpiece by hand from the back of the room. So I will just quickly see if I can find my... Uh, there and say uh, yes, that was it. Any questions?